Rico Tice is coming in and Richard Bagonan and it's great to have you with us gentlemen. You've been giving a terrific le lead for us on evangelism this week. Um, what's, let's just start with the excitement of the conference and Richard how's it been for you? <laughs> it's been tremendous to see particularly yesterday the linkage of the statement being produced mm -hmm. to the fact that we were asked by Ben Kawashi to come and to call the church to go out with the word. Mm. That the power is in the word that God is active outside the churches and that we have an entire army of Christian believers who should be taking the responsibility and the weight off of those in ministry and spreading it out into a world that desperately needs it. You mean you've just leaked a little bit of the draft statement that the statement is for positive evangelism? <laughs> well, hush my mouth. <laughs> I just think the material Richard's produced, Word One to One, is an amazing tool for people to go and tell so they can just get open John's Gospel. You know, they say it's 18 sentences, not verses. It's easier for the uh, uh, person investigating to accept that. And then you read, you read the verses and then you read the answers mm. and you just go through in terms of question and answer plus the verses. And it's a very safe way of just getting to know Jesus in the Gospel and people can do it rather anonymously, so they can just meet one-to-one, -one, uh, meet with a mate. So I, I think it's a real contribution Richard's made to, um, uh, you know, to the community here. And, and just want to thank him for years of labouring to get the word one, to get one together. It's a fantastic partnership, because what we see is if you've started to understand who Jesus is, then you're ready to explore Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> so we are the... the entree yeah. to Christianity Explored or of course if you've done Christianity Explored but within a course you didn't get it yet mm. because your biblical knowledge was so low well what a wonderful thing for a church to do but to get the uh, congregation to mentor someone mm. to take them through the whole of John's Gospel mm. and it's not really surprising is it Dominic that if you're meeting with somebody for say 20 coffee meetings of an hour long to do mm. 21 chapters the high likelihood you, you will have fallen in love mm. with Christ by the end mm. of that. Mm. So it's been tremendous to see it go worldwide. Now, I've been hearing conversations. You, you gave, gave, guys gave a presentation yesterday yes. in the main auditorium, mm. and then you were on an elective afterwards. Yes. People have been say, say, encouraged by stories of yes. people coming to Christ. Uh, yeah. Tell us some of those stories, because we've got people watching who weren't part of those seminars. Well, I think recently I think of a, an older guy uh, called uh, Andrew, who started coming along with his son who got married at All Souls. And just to, to say, as he got baptized at All Souls, gosh, my eyes just got open to Jesus. Mm. So that is, as he had Christ presented, particularly by his son and daughter-in-law, mm. his eyes were opened. Mm. And it's the miracle. And he just says, you know, I was, I was blind, but now I see. And it, I just think we've got to have the confidence that as we present Jesus by life and lip, we get the Gospels open, we try and live it as, as uh, uh, Matthew had done with his dad, with his wife, you know, uh, and, then, and then we got the Bible open as he came along to things. Um, God, God does, this is a new man, he's been born again. So it's just giving people the confidence, get the Bible open, pray, try and be godly, and the Lord will do a miracle, and if you don't think he'll do it, he did it for you. So if God opened your blind eyes, and I remember you saying there was a girl that um, thought that Jesus was more important than you are, and yeah. that's what made you think. She yeah. she presented Jesus as Lord. You were going, well, why is this happening? And the Lord opened your eyes. Yeah. But she was faithful in saying no yeah. by presenting Jesus as Lord. And Dominic, you know, we're thrilled to have you here, but, but she was obedient, but God did a miracle. Yeah, and I think right. it's those two things. But it's the Lord who, you know, the Lord... The Lord brought Andrew along, you know, this dear 70-year-old man, he's been such an encouragement to me, and, 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 and you, it was the Lord who was just drawing him after a lifetime of rebellion. Let me tell you the story of Martin. So Martin's an extremely bright man, very senior in the city of London. Yeah. I offered it to him at the, to start with, and I said this, Martin, haven't you always thought that one day you might have a look at the book that sold more copies than any other in the history mm. of printing? In other words, the Bible. Mm. Wouldn't you expect, and listen to how vague I was, wouldn't you expect it's got some good stuff in it? Mm. Now, two facts, it's sold more than any other, and people do think, they mostly think it's a rule book, but they think it's got some good stuff in mm. it. I said, now look, I'm incredibly excited because I've discovered there is just this one passage, which is, in the city, I call it an executive summary. Yeah. Everywhere else, I call it an overview. Yeah. It's 18 <laughs> sentences long, didn't call them verses. Yeah. 18 sentences long, I've got some great notes which have gone global, which help you look at what those sentences are. I'm so excited, can I buy you a coffee? He said, yes. We met 
for 15 months. After the first coffee, he turned to me and said, Richard, why has nobody ever shown me this before? 15 months later, my phone goes. I've been paying for coffee for 15 months. It's Martin, can I buy you a coffee? So I went for my free coffee. He walks in, gives me my coffee, and he I must says... Say that's, that's, Took him a little while to do the return. No, 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 no. I was no, I was always in there first. I want that's part of the living, loving church. I didn't put your wallet away. This is on me. So then it's on him. He puts down my coffee. He says, Richard, I knelt at the foot of the cross yesterday. I said, Now you're my brother. What took you there? Oh, it was nothing you said. Fifteen months. He then went. He literally did this. He said, Richard, I couldn't get over the first six words. So what do you mean? He said, they went into my mind like a branding iron on a piece of steak. In the beginning, he said, I've read Richard Dawkins. I've read Christopher Hitchens. Idiots. Yep. There has to have been a beginning. beginning. And then John, not you, Richard, John showed me who the word was, what the word had come to do, how the word died on a cross for me, offered me a living personal relationship empowered with him. That's what I've got. It was nothing you said. Mm. Now, the, the reason I tell that story, Dominic, what a relief. Mm. It's not about me. They don't remember what I say. Mm. They become fixated by what the gospel says. It is a living, powerful gospel. So our call yesterday, we expressed two convictions. One is, do you realize the Lord is actively at work in your own circle of contacts? I am always wrong why someone agrees to meet me. There's always something the Lord has done to prepare that person to, to mm. actually say, which is terribly important because I could stuff up the invitation. Yep. If the Lord's prepared them to say yes, they're gonna say yes. Mm. And the second thing is, the power is in the word. Mm. And so our call to the conference together yesterday was conference, where are you putting your trust? Mm. Is it in your own ministry and what you're doing? Or is it in the fact that you're living Lord and Savior builds his church through his word. Mm. Don't carry the burden on your shoulders alone. Please, oh please, conference, give them the how between us, mm. Mark's gospel, John's gospel, yep. and send them out. Mm -hmm. Because how big's the church gonna be if we only keep the gospel to the people that come in yeah, yeah. and yeah. they're not? Yeah. So that's the call and the joy is we're both seeing in our ministries and it's humbling for the two of us. We both mm. choke up. The Lord is so active. Mm. And so we've seen through what Rico did before me and now with William Taylor's help, mm. what I was able to do with Word One to One. We've seen the joy of the Word working. Mm. It's brilliant. Praise God for that. Now, um, your Englishman and the Church of England has been in the focus in discussion this week. Yes. Um, uh, what's the message you're gonna take back from here to the Church of England? Well, let me go first, then he can think of what he's no, going to officially yeah. say. I can be really blunt, because I'm not an Englishman, forget that, I'm a businessman. <laughs> and let me tell you what's, what the reaction I'm getting from senior businessmen in the City of London, people I know who run the insurance industry, they're coming up to me and going, Richard, what I'm seeing in my newspaper from the House of Bishops, that cannot be Christianity. That must be religiosity. Uh, uh, one guy used, that's churchianity. Where's Christ? I might try apostasy. They don't know that word. Yeah. <laughs> but what they're saying is they see through the apostasy mm. of where the House of Bishops has gone. Mm. So I've got no problem in actually being able to say, well, have you actually looked at what the word says? So I'm using it as an evangelistic opportunity, right, brother, okay. yeah, yeah. because they are open to saying, well, I can't believe that the Bible says what they are actually mm -hmm. uh, now saying is Christianity. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not Christianity, mm -hmm. it's churchianity, it's religiosity. They've walked away from seeing the Lord as their savior. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is my Lord, mm -hmm. and that's what I need to show through the pages of the word. Mm -hmm. So don't, this will blow over, the word will go out, God hasn't lost control, and people will realize that this is actual bankruptcy. Mm. Rico. Well, what affected my thinking five years ago when I made the statement that I thought the Holy Spirit would depart yeah. if we weren't faithful, um, was really Gresham Machen's book, Christianity and Liberalism, which was published 100 years ago today, this, this year, in which he said one of the great problems with um, evangelism is that 
the Liberals can use the excuse of evangelism to actually drive liberalism into the church. And I think that the bishops, um, a, a lot of them have thought, if we cut the price, more will buy. Right. So we've got to give way on human sexuality. To which our response is, no, no, if you do that and say there are blessings just to be more acceptable, then what happens is the Holy Spirit departs. And as we know in evangelism, we are totally dependent on him for blind eyes to be opened. Mm. So we'll see the Church of England decline and decline unless we're faithful. Now, if we are faithful, what I found, um, having given the interview and come to GAFCON five years ago, is I was no platformed. So really? yes, universities, schools, even in Parliament, I was meant to be giving an Easter talk at Parliament and was no platform for that, because I'd made statements that were clear that the only place for sex is within marriage between a man and a woman, which was what I promised to say when I got ordained. But can I say it was an absolute privilege to be no platform, because I felt I was being faithful to Jesus. And we've just got to understand that. It, I mean, it is, it is hard when a 21-year-old from a university says, we're not having you. And you think, you know, I was in the middle of COVID and got this message from one of the universities. I'd had a COVID funeral that day. I had one the next day. And then you get a no platform. You think, you know, I could have gone to the papers and reported that university mm. for what they did in terms of just, you know, doing that as one's trying to serve the community, taking funerals, mm. one of whom was of a, of a, 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 a medical worker. So what I guess I'm saying is, is that um, we've got to be faithful. We mustn't be afraid of, of, what, of you know, whatever the consequences are. And if we don't do that, the Holy Spirit will depart. Yeah. And that's what we're saying. Guys, if we continue on this, we're pressing the, the nuclear button, not only on the Anglican communion relationships we're seeing here, but more than that, on the work of God to open blind eyes, because he's the Holy Spirit. And let's bring it back to the conference. The joy of this conference is this. The House of Bishops have almost suggested, don't worry, we'll leave the door open for you. Mm -hmm. What this conference is saying, excuse me, House of Bishops of the Church of England, we didn't leave, you, you left. left. Yeah. yeah. And as a businessman, that's very, very clear to me. Mm -hmm. I think it's great to see here the, the unity from the global church, mm -hmm. where we are standing firm to saying, the word is everything. God builds his church through his word. Christ is central, he must be your Lord. Mm. And if you've stepped away from actually having his lordship over you through his word, you, not we, are in real trouble. And we call you to repent, mm. which is quite right. Well, that's what's coming here. A, a moment ago, we had uh, a guest, uh, a member of the Crown Nominations Commission, uh, a General Synod member, and she was pointing out that uh, in her process of uh, selecting bishops in the Church of England as one of the members who does that, uh, they've all made vows, they all made consecration yeah. vows to uphold the word of God, to yeah. say what God yeah. says, and the vast majority of them broke those vows a few months months ago. I mean, what you did was keep your vow. And, yeah. uh, and so, yes, you've suffered for the gospel, but you've played to the audience of one, the Lord Jesus Christ, and what a pathetic failure by those men who broke their vows and didn't play to the audience of one, and we need to say to them, you are going to have to answer to the Almighty. Well, I, yeah, and I just want to reach out to the bishops and say, look, um, Gresham Machen 100 years ago said, don't allow liberalism to change your gospel as you try and, um, you know, uh, fit yourself to the, to, to the culture. And that, that's what I think they're, they're, they're trying to say. You know, we're, we're doing this so that more people will come and it'll be more relevant, but it won't be relevant. The other thing I want to say is that the culture, so it's, I find it a lot easier now than five years ago because of a couple of things that happened. One is books like this. So this is a, not a Christian book. This is The Case Against the Sexual Re Revolution by Louise Perry. She's a feminist, but she basically says it is appalling for women in Britain today, for young women. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the culture is saying, what's happening? It's blowing up because the, the guys are out of control. Mm -hmm. and if you don't believe me, read the book. So we're also getting quite a lot of the culture going help, and at the very moment they're asking help, we've now walked away from holding up marriage as the only place for sex and saying that's the safe place, everyone. I mean, her final chapter in here is, listen to your mother. She, she's a sort of an, an evolutionist, she, she, she's not a Christian, so she's trying to think, what can you do, girls, to be safe? Listen to your mother. So, you know, we're providing a framework that says, here's a really safe place for, for women and children uh, for sex, which is within marriage, and now we've just walked away from actually saying, no, that's the only place. So again, the culture's doing that. And then the other thing that's just, 
does your head in is that the number of people who are same-sex and celibate mm. from X Out Loud or living out, these, these wonderful Christians who've emerged and says... Who, say, who I think are heroes of the faith in this, in this age. Yeah, and, and, and they've said, we love Jesus, we trust him, we flourish under his rule, he fills us with the spirit, please may the church be a safe place for us to flourish. Mm. And it's a safe place if you say the only place for sex is between a man and a woman within marriage. And then again, the bishops have made them feel incredibly unsafe. Mm. So pastorally, it's a nightmare, let alone many single people in the church who've renounced sex because they know the only place is within marriage and they haven't found the right person and they accept God's sovereignty, but it's been a costly thing and they feel deserted. Mm. So the pastoral implications, you know, so just on so many fronts, we're going, please, before July, row back on this. Yes. Otherwise, we're going to press the nuclear button. Mm. We're going to, and, and that's what I've seen here, because the GAFCON has been going 25 years. It's been going a long time. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the conference I first went to was 2008, but it was going before mm. that. And now their patience has gone. Yeah. Yeah. And they're saying, we are not going to be in fellowship with you unless you submit to Jesus, who knows what's best. Yeah. So it's, you know, in some ways, it's quite a frustrating time because mm. you're going, please, who has bewitched you? It's like the Galatians. Who? Why can't you see this? Yeah. Are you going to stand with your brothers and sisters in Christ? Are you going to stand with the Lord Jesus? Or are you going to be conformed to the pattern of the world, Romans 12.1? Yeah. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that is it. And, and, and again, you've got to then pray that they'll have churches where they can see this happening. Because I'm in a local church. I think often the bishops are cut off from a local church where they see people like Andrew come to faith Mm. rejoice in Jesus, come under his lordship, repent of their sins. I think if you stop seeing that, you, forgot, you forget where the power is, which is the word going out, people coming to faith, confessing it, being thrilled to find a church family, and so the church grows. It's an interesting point. Um, we were talking with uh, um, your point about the, uh, the bishops being out of touch with the local church family, uh, talking with um, the New Zealand bishop, Jay Bean. Yeah. He said it was the bishops that led their synod into sin. Yeah. In Australia, the... Um, in the General Synod, the clergy and the laity voted overwhelmingly for sexual orthodoxy and the bishops voted 12-10 in favour of revisionism. Uh, we've seen in Scotland and in England it was the bishops that led um, the church yeah. into sin. I mean, the, the English vote 60-40 in the laity and the clergy, but the, yeah. the bishops off the scale in apostasy. And, and, and furthermore with that, they could quite easily have thrown a vote back to the House of Laity and the House of Clergy. You need a two-thirds majority for this to go through. So rather than change the history of the denomination, mm. they could have gone back and said, look, it's not happening. So there were measures to do that. Instead, they went round it and created these blessings off their own bat without. I mean, again, we're going to see what happens in July. We've got to see that. And again, I speak for myself here, not for All Souls Church. So they're going to have to they'll make comments too. My, my very faithful boss, Charlie Screen, you know, has commented too. But I'm looking at and going, this is madness. I mean, you're, you're just pressing the nuclear button mm. because these blessings are changing everything and they don't think they are, but they are. Mm. Well, it's been quite astonishing to feel, I mean, to come here and I remember I was out to dinner with a group of friends the night mm. before the conference and somebody said, I hope we get a strong statement this week. Yes. And then that mood has just yes. grown yes. as the week has gone on. Yes, it has. See, in my world, you are held accountable. I mean, my, my career has been, for the last 20 years, I've been chairman of companies. Mm. If you get appointed, you get held accountable. Mm. So I'm really interested to see what God's going to do. Mm. Because it's no good looking at those underneath you and saying, oh, well, you know, that's fine. They, they want me to go this way. The Lord appoints those bishops. Mm. So let's see what the Lord is going to do, because there must be a call to repentance when you've walked away from the word. Mm. I, I think, can I say a last thing? I'm sure yeah. we could, but my last thing would be, I think at this point, everybody has to pick where they stand. Yes. Mm. We are at a moment where you have to decide what the Bible says, what it means to be faithful to Jesus. Five years ago, I think, uh, when, when I made the statements I did about the Holy Spirit leaving, I, you know, people didn't see it. But now, it's crystal clear. it is it crystal, is crystal clear. clear. And I want to say particularly to parachurch organizations, 
you have to stand, and faithfulness is at this moment standing and acknowledging that Jesus is Lord. Whatever, whatever, wh wherever you are, it, for all of us, we need to make a stand. So someone like J. John at the Philo Trust, I think, has been outstanding. He has calmly and graciously come out of lane and being an evangelist and said, look, we've got to be faithful to the gospel at this moment. Mm -hmm. And I certainly, I'm wanting to support J. John all I can because, you know, he's, he's been a wonderful evangelist, but at this moment he's made his, he said, look, everybody, this is where we are. And I think, you know, of all, and all the parachurches, you know, Christian Explored, we're going to find it very hard to stay in the Church of England because the people that support us are going to go, ah, oh, Mark 1 verse 15, repent and believe the good news, mm -hmm. the kingdom's come. And then they say, but Rico, your own denomination doesn't do this. So why should we support you? So the lack of integrity mm. is, is glaring. And, and when you're trying to raise money for resources that you're trying to send around the world, mm. then you have to pick between Jesus and your denomination. And I never thought I'd have to do that. But I'm having to do that a little bit. Yeah. And, and I've got angry. the same with John 5. People get to John 5, 23, 24, and they discover what true sin is. Have you honored the Son? Because if you haven't honoured the Son, you cannot be right with the Father. There's the definition of sin. Have you honoured the Son? And the danger with where they're going is they've gone, well, thanks very much, Jesus. We understand what you said. You were 2,000 years ago, and now it's moved on. That's not honouring the Son, and therefore you can't be right with the Father. So it's a great call, again, from, from GAFCON back to the Word. Where are we going to go? We're going to go to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. From there, what's the call? To take the message to the rest of the world. Where and how? Through the Word going out. Rico, why don't you lead in prayer about the various issues we've just talked about? Yeah, just as I say that, I'm going to be a mission partner with All Souls, so my church family at All Souls, yeah. rock solid and faithful to this. Yeah. But again, it's my, it's my church, it's the Church of England. Yeah. That's the thing, and that's what breaks our heart. Let me pray. Should I do that? Father God, we do um, think of the legacy of the Church of England. We're so grateful for it. And uh, we thank you for, as we've been hearing this week, the scriptures, the 39 articles, for the structures that we have. Lord, we do pray, Lord, that you would not cause your Holy Spirit to depart. And we know that he will leave. He'll take, the lampstand will be taken if we're not faithful. So, Lord, we cry to you for faithfulness, for all of us personally, corporately, for a faithfulness to Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Rico. Thanks, Richard. You are watching The Heart of Gafcon on thepastorsheart.net. We're brought to you by Anglican Aid, and we'll be back in a moment.